Hi, this is Ed. Welcome to the Outer Light channel. Well, before I go on, I just want to thank my patrons again for your continued support and thank you for keeping this channel running. Well, here we have a tweet by Julian Assange dated today, as a matter of fact, and it tells a lot actually. It tells a lot of things because there's a lot of things happening in the world tonight today. <laughs> it's hard to explain, really, but let's have a look. The head of Al Jazeera News told me in 2010 that Qatar has a nuclear weapon. Just one, Al Jazeera. It can be used once, then it's gone. So, an interesting tweet by Julian Assange chiming in here on the situation with Qatar, which has escalated uh, significantly, as a matter of fact. Now, of course, WikiLeaks showed in their other email, before I go on to the other news to do with why the situation is escalating in Qatar, let's just jump back to WikiLeaks. It's important to keep on highlighting this classic tweet from WikiLeaks pinned at the top of WikiLeaks Twitter right now. So let's take a look at this here. So WikiLeaks posted this. Of course, this goes to their archive there. You can see there on screen on WikiLeaks. Um, let's have a look at this email. This is written by Hillary Clinton. Uh, and it states here, in a nutshell, I've gone over it before. I don't want to uh, continually drive this home, but it's important to keep on uh, highlighting this. It states that this is a Hillary Clinton email on her private email server leaked to WikiLeaks. Governments of Qatar and Saudi Arabia, which are providing clandestine financial and logistical support to ISIL i.e. ISIS and Dinesh. So here we have direct evidence from the Secretary of State via Western Intelligence as it shows in the actual email, i.e. the five eyes, etc. And that's showing that it's Saudi Arabia that's providing the support, Saudi Arabia and Qatar that's providing the support financial and involving weaponry, logistics, etc. to ISIS, i.e. they created ISIS. There's a large relationship probably there. They created ISIS. My opinion, ISIS is a intelligence creation in itself. You seed it, you train it, you turn the key and then let it hop off into the sunset to cause its havoc. And then you keep on funding it. But here is the bombshell. I think that's a really big bombshell because that shows that Hillary Clinton is aware of the fact that Saudi Arabia is fi funding ISIS and, of course, who's the major donor to the Clinton Foundation, the biggest donor ever, Saudi Arabia and Qatar, to the tune of billions of dollars to the Clinton Foundation. And if we just jump, and I know I'm going to go to this Qatar information pretty shortly, but let's just jump over very quickly since it's relevant. New news at the moment, Senate Committee launching first new Clinton corruption investigation. It's important to highlight this because I'm speculating here. Now, this is a major thing that's happening at the moment. This is, of course, from, I think, June the 6th. Well, this came out in April, sorry. But this is now making the headlines again on Fox News. I'll jump to that in a moment. But this shows here that the Bangladesh government... Corruption probe. There was a corruption probe into this individual here. But guess what the Secretary of State Hillary Clinton did? Well, Hillary Clinton put pressure on the Bangladeshi government to end its probe into this individual right here because they were a Clinton Foundation donor and close friends of the Clintons. So Saudi Arabia's huge donor. Here shows influence directly to the Bangladeshi government on behalf of this individual here, a Clinton donor. And what do you reckon the influence Saudi Arabia and Qatar has within the US administration of Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton when they're donating literally billions of dollars? I know that the numbers are like a billion or something, but where is the other shadowed money? How much do you get when you donate a painting that's worth $100 million dollars let's say, and you exchange that through the art exchange program, the embassy exchange program, that involves Hillary Clinton as well, and all of her um, different spider rib of operatives, in my estimations. So, 
so that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, well, this here. So let's go off to the Fox News thing so you can take a quick look at that. Here we are over at Fox News. Let's just have a couple seconds look at this here and see because this is an update on that actual scandal came out 5th of June. Um, so let's take a look at this. Of course, this was also reported uh, the other day by H.A. Goodman who uh, reported this as well. And H.A. Goodman, if you don't know, excellent channel, excellent journalist. So make sure to check out that channel. But let's just play a couple of seconds here at the moment. Speaking of Clintons, they're under investigation yet again. Set your clock by it. The Senate Judiciary Committee is launching a probe into Hillary Clinton's actions while she was Secretary of State. According to the Daily Caller News Foundation, which first reported the story in April, Clinton pressured government officials in Bangladesh to drop a corruption investigation of Muhammad Yunus, a businessman and Clinton Foundation donor. Peter. So there you have it even by Fox News. That's an update on this from uh, April itself. And this is starting to gain steam now. So why is it gaining steam now? I think the Clinton Foundation has been weakened. Qatar, of course, is a major player in the Clinton Foundation, and now they're under direct threat. And what do you think would happen if you're no more used to Hillary Clinton? Of course, that's why everyone in these places wanted Hillary Clinton elected. Now, Qatar's been split from Saudi Arabia, of course, Saudi Arabia and Qatar being the main funders, according to Western intelligence and that report that Hillary Clinton had in her own emails. And I'm not even going to go into all the, the espionage, the, the all the other things to do with emails, Anthony Weiner, Uber Aberdeen, who's a Saudi Arabian agent, in my opinion. Um, and, you know, Anthony Weiner, who's working, in my opinion, probably for Mossad. So... Um, I'm not even going to go into that level of corruption. There's just so much corruption. How do you even... When corruption gets just so much, how can you even talk about it? Because literally everywhere you throw a dart, you hit some kind of new huge level of corruption. <laughs> but anyway, this is about Qatar. So let's go back to the story about ha happening in Qatar or Qatar. Okay, so I just want to go off to that. Now this is all just uh, to provide context for what I think is happening. So here we are. If you just type this into Google, of course, all this news popping up here. Eight hours ago, 15, two hours ago, eight hours ago, 10, etc., five hours ago. So what's happened is that a number of things have escalated now. First of all, the other day, of course, Qatar was um, isolated. Um, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, etc., stated that they were no longer going to have diplomatic relations with Qatar, the imports and exports have slowed down and are in an isolated region uh, surrounded by people that have cut off diplomatic ties. So it's going to be very hard for them. So what's happening now? Well, it's not only that, because as soon as they were isolated and the Saudi Arabia, etc., and this is coming after Trump's visit to Saudi Arabia where I think something significant happened there, the U.S. gave a lot of arms to Saudi Arabia. Now Saudi Arabia and that have isolated Qatar. And um, and the situation has escalated. Qatar, of course, if you look at that assessment by Western Intelligence, who uh, Hillary Clinton reiterates in that email, it shows that these are one of the main funders of ISIS. So what's where has ISIS attacked lately in the last 24 hours? Well, for the first time in decades, ISIS has actually attacked. Here we are over at the Guardian here. This is an info, a little bit of information. For the first time in decades, Iran has had a major terrorist attack. And for the first time, I think I've never heard of one before, ISIS has claimed responsibility for the attacks. This is literally happening in a very slight time frame of when Qatar one of the major funders of ISIS, according to Western intelligence, we can say now, is in fact um, cornered and completely isolated. And then what do you have? It? You have an ISIS attack in Iran. Iran now has a pretext to get involved if something goes down with Qatar and Saudi Arabia, etc. And in a reply, a strange reply here now, you have the Iranian military blames the Saudis. Okay, so you can see how these are strange 
the chess pieces are being moved now. Now I don't know who did that attack. How would I ever know? Could be a false flag attack by Iran. It could be a real response. But who stands to gain from this? Well, of course, it puts another player in the field immediately. Now Iran versus the Saudis. And Qatar has been isolated. According to Julian Assange, Qatar has a nuclear weapon. And of course, all of this is very strange. At the same time, the major news from Al Jazeera. Turkish parliament approves troop deployment in Qatar. Turkish parliament has approved the legislation allowing its troops to be deployed in a Turkish military base in Qatar. So here you have another piece of the puzzle happening right now. So Qatar vehemently denies the accusations that it's associated with as a funder of terror. That's why Saudi Arabia, etc. At least that was the, um, the screen at which they said that they're um, isolating Qatar. It is the worst split between the powerful Arab states in decades. Okay, so Aragon has criticized the Arab states' move saying isolating Qatar and imposing sanctions will not resolve any problems, etc, etc, etc. Turkey has maintained good relations with Qatar, as well as several of its Gulf Arab nations. Neighbours, Turkey has set up a military base in Qatar and a first installation in the Middle East as part of an agreement signed in 2014. So what do you have happening here? Well, Turkey is a Western ally, Qatar is a Western ally, Saudi Arabia is a Western ally, and I'm just talking about through the deep state. You know, not that they're any real ally of the funding terrorism, right? But to the deep state, to the weapons dealers, these are all allies. So, here is your new conflict. The Middle East, instead of North Korea, selling arms to both sides, and on and on and on it will go, in my opinion. But, you know, these people are the funders of ISIS, etc. And you have to wonder this. If there is a war in the Middle East, if the oil supply through the Strait of Hormuz, for example, is compromised, someone sinks a tanker down there or something, or, you know, it makes it impossible in order to maneuver down there to get all the oil through, what do you reckon happens within the rest of the world? Well, you wake up in the morning and all your groceries are five times more than they used to cost. Cost of gas is ten times, a hundred times more than it used to be, etc. That's just a possible outcome. I'm not saying that would be something that would happen, but it's something that could happen. And of course, as Julian Assange is saying, and a lot of people are watching this right now, it's very significant what's happening. It seems that there's a reshuffle somewhere between all the power players and of course you've seen a major split in Qatar and Saudi Arabia for the first time in decades as it states Turkey is going to support Qatar Turkey has got access to a very large military um, you know as part of NATO etc and then you have Saudi Arabia so how will it all play out well I don't really know but if Qatar has nuclear weapons, it does add something else to the mix. The head of Al Jazeera News told me in 2010 that Qatar has a nuclear weapon. Just one, Al Jazeera. It can be used once, then it's gone. Of course, jumping back to the classic from WikiLeaks, it's evolving around Western intelligence. Let's have a look at the actual WikiLeaks email as stated right here. You can see that WikiLeaks URL at the top. Of course, we come down to here. You can see it there. Just show you, just for historical purposes, classic John Podesta, classic Hillary Clinton. On August the 17th, 2014, Hillary Rodham Clinton, etc. Note, sources include Western intelligence, U.S. intelligence, and sources in the region, CIA, NSA, MI5, etc., etc. Shows that Saudi Arabia and Qatar are providing clandestine financial and logistical support to ISIL and other radical Sunni groups in the region. 
least if something happens, you know, with um, Qatar and Saudi Arabia, etc., you might see a lot of less influence within the United States election cycles, you know, if we do not go to into some kind of World War Three. Who really knows? I don't think it's the risk is that high of that. There's so much importance on the energy reserves. There'll be every attempt to de-escalate anything. So just something to think about. And this is Ed from the Outer Light. Stay safe. Go and do your own research. Decide for yourselves. Of course, I'll put the link to the Turkey article in the comment section so you can have a read in detail. In the meantime, stay safe. And I'll see you later.